Last week, Gregory from Athens in Greece sent me a request to teach a rather unusual song. He wrote, I know it's not very popular, jazzy, but not exactly a jazz standard, but it is my favourite song. It's a song recorded by Slim Gaylord in 1939 as the B-side to Chicken Rhythm. And it has the curious title of A Wella Take Em A Joe, brackets Crapshooter's Jive. A Wella Take Em A Joe, got to do it, Wella Shake Em A Joe. If this sounds strangely familiar to you, it's possible that you've heard it as the main sample on Kid Casino's dance tune, which is called simply Take Em Joe. It may not be a jazz standard, but the chord progression certainly follows a very standard jazz pattern, with almost all the chords following the circle of fourths. The A section, which is also used as the intro, goes something like this. So we start with the F chord. That's an ordinary E-shaped bar chord with a bar at fret 1. Then we're up to D minor here at the 5th fret, so bar at the 5th fret with an A minor shape there. And on this chord, most of the time I can hear the bass playing the A as the root, so I'm calling that D minor slash A, D minor over an A root. Then we come down to G minor 7th. And this I advise fingering with your second finger on the root at fret 3 on the bottom string. That mutes out the next string and then we place the third finger across the fourth, third and second strings all at the third fret. And also mute out the top string there. So that's G minor 7th and then C 7th. So that's an ordinary C open C shape with the little finger added on the third string at fret 3 there. So that sequence goes through twice. Then listening to the record I can hear various different versions of this sequence being played next. So that's F, F seventh. Just move that little finger down to the fourth fret there, the second string. B flat, using the A shaped bar chord across those three strings there, second, third, and fourth string at the third fret with my root here. And then B flat minor, changing the A major shape into the A minor. Then back to F, C seventh, F. Quite a cliche. If you're used to jazz chord progressions, you might like to throw in this series of substitutions. So instead of... You can play... Listening to the record, to be honest, I find it hard to hear exactly what the rhythm guitar is playing a lot of the time. It's quite low in the mix. But listening to the bass line, um, different bass lines used on the record, it sounds likely that they were using these sorts of substitutions, which were very typical of how swing progressions were interpreted in that era. So just to show you those substitute chords in detail, from the ordinary F, we move up to F slash A. So my second finger's on the A at fret 5 there on the bottom string, first finger on the F, 
and my third finger on the C here, uh, third string, fifth fret, and a little finger, if you like, you can add there on the sixth fret on the second string to give another F. And I'm muting out the fifth string. Then we move up to B flat major seven. Just a, a four note chord there. First finger fret six on the bottom string for the B flat root. And then it's kind of like an A minor shape there with my remaining three fingers. Second finger, sixth fret, second string. Third finger, seventh fret on the fourth string and pinky. 7th fret on the 3rd string, then moving on up to B diminished 7th, just a 3 string chord there, 2nd finger on the root B, killing the 5th string, 1st finger on the 6th there, um, and 3rd finger um, here on the 3rd string, 7th fret. Um, then we're up to F over C, which is just really a bar chord. Um, although I play it as a, I kill the fifth string on the top string, just play it as a four string A shape there. Let's move that across. And then it's just C7 using an E7 shape. And back to the F. So all together, that is... So that's the A section, which is played once through for the intro and then twice through for each chorus. Then we're on to the B section, which goes like this. So that B section starts with A7, um, ordinary E7 shaped bar chord, barred at the 5th fret. Two bars of that, and then across to D minor, using the A minor shape, barred still at the 5th fret there. And then on down to G7, uh, and again using the same shape as we just used for A7. I think he plays one bar of C, followed by C7. And you could play those either as bar shapes, A shape bar chord there at the third fret, switching to A7 shape. Or we could play that as an open C, switching to C7. They both work pretty well. about it for the rhythm part in this tune but there's also a really nice simple lead guitar solo that I'd like to cover in the next video in this series. If you'd like to learn more about how songs like this are put together then you might like to take advantage of our free 30-day membership offer that we have going on over at the Secret Guitar Teacher site. There you'll also be able to access the tab printout and backing tracks that go along with this lesson. I wanna take on my joe. Got to do it, I'm gonna shake on my joe.